Hello there, Mr. Chan for Algebra 1. Please grab your note takers and turn to page 149. We're about to start 7-4, factoring polynomials. Factoring is another way of describing how to break down or divide up uh, using division. We are coming from multiplication of polynomials, which is just building it up. We're now going to break things down. The opener here I am not a fan of, so we're going to skip this part. I am going to create my own little scenario when it comes to um, factoring polynomials. Let's go ahead and use the right side of the notes here. I want you guys to think about toy boxes. Write this down. The rule for toy boxes, and let's pretend uh, we as a kid might have multiple toy boxes in our room, is we are allowed to play with a toy with one condition. That condition is that the toy that we pick from these toy boxes must be in all the toy boxes. You can't pick something that's only in one of the boxes. It must be in all the boxes. It must be common. So I want you to think about this when it comes to factoring polynomials today. Think of it this way. Let's draw three toy boxes for fun of various sizes. We'll go ahead and put in some toys in here. random toys for fun. And take your time in drawing this, of course. So we have three toy boxes. They kind of represent the terms in a polynomial. The rule is that you can play with the toy as long as it is in all the boxes. If you take a look at it, the items that look like they're in all three boxes are the green jack, you know, the things you throw with the ball, rubber ball, and also that purple, I don't know what that is, disc or something that kids play. So these would be considered common toy, common toys. And that, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to our algebra today and forevermore, when it comes to factoring, these are called common factors. Also known as multiples. We can apply the same idea or concept to say numbers inside a box. And numbers sometimes need to be broken down. Let's say the number 21, 14, and 70 are in each of these boxes. Count kind of like the toys. 21 can be broken down into two numbers. They are three and seven. 14 can be broken down as well in the second box, two and seven. And 70 can be broken down into three numbers, seven, two, and five. 
So kind of like the box, uh, the toys up there, you look for common factors, okay? In this case, there's only one number that's common amongst all three of them, and that's the number seven. In fact, the number seven is called the greatest common factor. That should sound familiar, right? To some of you, when it comes to fractions. Or you might have heard of it as the greatest common denominator when it comes to those fractions. But here's the greatest common factor. Okay, very good. Let's go and apply those uh, ideas to our next page. Okay, here we go. Example one, find the greatest common factor of the terms of each polynomial. What I like to do sometimes is perhaps put the terms, notice that we have a binomial here of two terms, right? We have a 15x squared and an 18. Let's put them in a box. This box should seem very familiar, but instead of given, being given the multiplication situation that we did in the previous sections, we're actually getting the answer, 15x squared plus 18. We need to figure out what can come out of it, meaning what's the greatest common factor between those two terms. Let's break down 15x squared. 15 uh, first is the coefficient. Oh, that's three times five. Those are prime factors. Even x squared gets broken down as well x, x. Great, that works for the first half. Second half, 18 can be broken down. Two times nine, nine can be broken down three and three. Okay, so, so far we have this grouping and this grouping. What we wanna do is find what's common amongst them. You don't have to draw all these steps, or you can do some of it in your head, that's fine. But remember now, 15x squared is now literally 3, 5, x, x in the first half, and the 18 is 2, 3, and 3. And take a look here. Ah, my greatest common factor, the only thing that's common between them is the number 3. There it is, the greatest common factor. Sometimes we call that GCF, right? This is the largest number that divides into each term. Yay. And that's all we're doing today. All right, let's do that to the next polynomial. In this case, we have three. Any questions about 1A? All right, 1B, we have a trinomial. Now, after a while, you're not gonna, you don't have to do all this stuff that I'm doing right now. You can do some of it mentally in your head. As we do more of these problems, they get a little more sophisticated, right? So negative 18, six and 24, let's break them all down. We have a little time, let's do it. So we'll do the coefficients first, right? Negative 18 is negative one and 18. 18 is two and nine. Nine is three and three. Yay. We have y to the fourth. We'll just call it y, 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 y. Again, this is just exaggerating the factors of each term. You can just start doing this in your head if you want to, or just kind of guess at it. You know, oh, what divides into negative 18, six and 24? Oh, then you look at the y's. Oh, in fact, let's jump the gun here a little bit. What you want to do with the variables is you see, hey, how many of those variables can I squeeze out? 
what's the largest number of Y's can I pull out? Oh, that's just a single Y and another single Y. All right, going back to the middle term, two and three for six, and 24 is two times 12, 12 is two times six, six is uh, two times three. So again, this is not necessarily something you have to do, but it's kind of cool to see all that. So we can look at it at just the bubbles there, the factor tree, so to speak, and uh, just grab what's common amongst all three groups, okay? So here, I'm gonna go ahead and take out, let's see, start with the coefficients, the y's. Hmm, there's a y here, here, and here, so there's a Y, boom. And then there's a Y here, here, and here. Another one, great. No more Ys from the last term that I could pull out, so therefore the other ones are just done. How about the coefficients? Let's take out the numbers here. Oh, there's a two here, two, and a two there, so I'll take out a two, and a three in each of those terms, and nothing else. So ladies and gentlemen, my greatest common factor is two times three times y times y, or simply six y squared. Not too bad, huh? All right. Oh, number two. They're using the idea of factoring now, the word factor. We're literally gonna finish this and divide. That's what it means. Factor means to divide. with the greatest common factor, GCF. Okay, let's oblige them. Factor out means to divide out. So we have three terms here. We have x cubed, x squared, 5x squared, and neg uh, minus 22x. Uh, we don't have to draw the boxes if you don't want to. You can if you want to. But what, what we wanna do is look for the greatest common factor first, the GCF. Look at the three terms here. We have here literally x, x, x. Over here we have five, x, x. And finally minus uh, two times 11 times x. Oh look, they all have an x, yay. So there it is. No, ver no numbers though to worry about. That is your greatest common factor. And if you don't have any numbers to pull out, you call that a one x, okay? So now we are literally going to take my original expression and divide out the GCF. We're going to divide by 1x to all of that. When you divide, you split them up and reduce. You're divided by one x to all three terms. And when you reduce that, you'll get the answer. Oh, look, that x cancels with one of those, that x cancels with one of those, and that x cancels with that one right there, leaving me with dun, 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 x squared plus five x minus 22. Now, when you say factor out, you have to show, we're kind of going backwards of, uh, of uh, multiplication, right? We're dividing out by one X. So that's how you express the final answer. That one X was the greatest common factor, right? And the answer that we just got is called the quotient, meaning we just divided a bunch. Okay, not too bad, right? Next example is the same, more or less. Uh, again, you can draw a box and you wanna do all that in your head, you can. Just recall that this answer right here, we've, looks familiar, doesn't it, right? I mean, you can literally think about back in 7-2, I believe, or 7-3, I can't remember which one, but if we would ask you to, oh, distribute or uh, foil or apply multiplication, right? We would, multiply the GCF with the quotient and get back the original answer right there, okay? We're just going backwards now. We're dividing, that's what's happening. All right, 
Let's go to the letter B here, greatest common factor here. Ooh, we have three terms. They are separated by pluses and minuses. We have a negative 16 at 28 and 20. Hmm. If that's a little tough to do in your head, you can just try to break it down. Negative 16 is negative 1, 2, 2, 2, 2. 28 is 2, 2, 7. And 20 is negative 1, uh, 2, 2, 5. That works, yeah. You can try to do that in your head or break it down using the factor tree. Whichever what you feel comfortable with, that's fine. So for the coefficient here, let's take a look here. We have a, a 2 amongst all three of them. And another 2. Very nice. Oh. So two times two is four. Nice. Look at the variables. They all have y's in them. What you want to shoot for, and you can only do this if they all have the same variable, you shoot for the smallest one of, amongst them. That's y to the third. Okay, there it is. There's your GCF. Yay, do the same thing. You can do this part in your head if you like to. Doesn't matter. Take each of the terms and divide by the GCF. And reduce. Another technique is to cross out the GCFs in that whole uh, factor tree and whatever's left is what you have for your answer, right? So four goes into negative 16 for the first one negative four times. See? Negative four right there with the leftover factors. Over here, f f uh, four goes in 28, seven times. There's that leftover factor right there. And finally on the end, four goes in a negative 20, negative five times. See it right there. The y's cancel as well. Let's do those. Three of those y's cancel with six, uh, three, uh, three out of the six of the first terms. Over here, three goes into that uh, four once. Oh, all those y's go away. All right, so you write your answer with the GCF first, and then parenthesize what you have left. It's a little messy up there, my apologies. We have a negative four y to the third, plus, what is that, seven y, very good then minus a five on the end, and that's it. Some of these steps you can skip if you start doing it in your head. Again, we have the GCF part and, and of course we have the quotient part. Not bad. I'm ready for the next page, let's do it. Aha! Good news, we are skipping example three, ha ha ha. Ready for the last page? Let's do it. Oh, yay, we're just finding the greatest common factor, meaning we're finding a toy amongst the toy boxes. I mean, you're welcome to break them down. 10 is two and five. 25 is 5 and 5. And of course we have an X right there. The only thing common amongst those two groups is the number 5. There it is. There's your GCF. Ooh, look at number 7. Strictly mainly variables. Now you can break them all down or just observe what variables they both have. They share X's. I noticed that. You want to pick the smallest number of x's, x to the third. Because each one will have that many. How about the y's? Again, pick the smallest y. And there it is, y to the first. So your GCF there is x to the third, y. Okay. Number eight is next. We have an eight and a 28 to break down. Again, you can do it really quickly in your head, or write it out. 28 is 2, 2, 7. And don't think that everyone is expected to know how to factor that pretty fast there. I just have been doing this for years. And just take your time. 
don't feel pressure to just break it down so fast with these factor trees. All right, we have a two, uh, pair of two, so it's two times two is four, nice. And we have some A's. Pick the smallest A, of course, in this case, A squared. And there it is, my GCF for A squared, not bad. Let's keep going, number nine, they give us a bunch of these, huh? A lot of them. We have a four and a nine. Oh, unfortunately, there are no common coefficients there. So there, we won't be pulling any numbers out there. Do we have any X's or Y's in both of them? No. Oh no, so we have none. So this means there's no greatest common factor for this particular problem. I mean, you can argue one is the only one you can divide out by. And that's all you would get if you were to really factor it. Number 10 is next. We have 12 and 16. What's the greatest common factor between 12 and 16? I mean, you can, what can you divide into 12 and 16, right? You go up the list, right? Hmm, two, three, four works. Yeah, four works. You can just do mental math there. Uh, very good. Four is the largest one. Yeah, I can't think of anything else bigger than four. How about the A's? Oh, well, let's bring out the A to the fourth and the B's, of course, B to the first. Okay. All right. So a lot of different approaches and eventually build up some confidence and you can do a lot of this in your head. On number 11 next, we have the number 14 and the number 15. Unfortunately, that's 2, 7, and this is 3, 5. Nothing common there amongst the coefficients. However, the variables hopefully can be uh, divided. Oh, I have x to the 6, very nice. Y to the 8th, and there it is. Very good. Let's jump to the next few here. Okay. I, uh, yeah, let's do this. Okay. We'll just jump around here in different techniques. Factoring, just like the thing we did up there, above there. We have a binomial. I'm gonna do some mental math here. Hmm, what divides it to 10 and 12 and it's the largest number? That's the number two. Can't think of anything else. Let's look at the A's. I can pull out a single A, pull out a single B, and there it is. There's my GCF part of my product, okay? So mental math here. 10 divided by two is five. I'm going backwards here. A squared, take out an A, leaves me with an A. B divided by itself, leaves me with no more Bs. That's a, a single one. That's the first half of the binomial there. Second half, 12 divided by two is six. A divided by A goes away, and B div squared divided by B is B. And ladies and gentlemen, there it is. This is my factored polynomial with a GCF. Uh, number 13, you guys wanna try it with a box for fun? We can do that. We have a trinomial. I'm gonna put those terms inside the trinomial. I mean, sorry, the box. And just take out a common factor amongst the three coefficients and, and the variables. I have a negative three, 12, and a negative 21. This is a good time to talk about what happens when you have a leading term that's negative. If you have a leading term that's negative, take out a negative factor, please. 3, 12, 21. Oh, I can take out a 3. Nice. X's. Let's look at the X's. Look, pick the lowest X, X squared. And now I'm ready to divide. You can write it out if you want to and reduce individually like we did on the previous examples in the start of our lesson here. Or you can mental math it, okay? All right. So negative 3 divided by negative 3 is first. Okay? So we're taking these, these ones and dividing by the... G, C, F right now. So negative three divided by negative three is positive one. X to the fourth divided by X squared is X squared, okay? Second term, 12 divided by negative three is negative four. Watch out for those negatives and positives. X to the third divided by X is X. I'm sorry, X to the third divided by X squared is X. That's what I meant to say. And finally, the last term is negative 21 divided by negative 3 is positive 7. 
x squared divided by x squared, they cancel, this goes away. So just mentally think about what I've been doing, right? I've been doing things like this in my head. To get the seven right there. Okay, doing that in my head. Let's keep going, number 14 is next. I'll switch back to mental math there. Hmm. 15 and 10. Oh, I can take out a five. Yay. That's my GCF. Oh, by the way, I forgot to circle the answer for number 13 there. There it is, the product of those two. Okay. All right, number 14. <clears throat> you can take out a five. Let's look at the X's here. <clears throat> X squared is the lowest one and a single Y. Very nice. A lot of times I should line this up a little bit. Let's move that over. Do, 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 do. Okay. And I'll just put it underneath right here. There we go. That works. <coughs> 15 divided by 5 is 3. X squared divided by X. I'm sorry. X cubed divided by X squared is X. Y divided by Y goes away. Second half, 10 divided by five is two. X squared divided by X squared goes away. Y to the third divided by Y is just Y squared. Yay. This is my answer for the number 14. Yeah, this is just a bunch of practice here at this point. Uh, let's do a box for number 15. Why not? So the difficulty level is pretty much the same across the board. Just remember things like a negative number, and of course, uh, with some of the terminology, GCF and factoring and dividing, things like that. All right, we have three terms here. It's a binomial, a trinomial, my bad. Out of the uh, three terms, I can pull out a single x to the eighth power. When I do that, I'm dividing, I'm subtracting the exponents there. x to the tenth divided by x to the eighth is x squared. Next one is x. And the last one, be careful, is negative one, right? Negative one. And there's my factored form. Number 16 is a trinomial. Ooh, I have a three, a nine, and an eight. Boo. Nothing factors there. Okay, great. How about the x's are next? I see an x there and an x. Oh, I don't see an x on the back half, do I? So I can't pull out an X, so boo, Y's. Oh, I only see a Y here and here, but not in the middle term. Boo, how about the Z's? I only see a couple, of, uh, I only see Z's in the back half. So nothing comes out. This particular problem is already factored. It's done, can't be divided up any further, unfortunately. Yeah, that happens. Number 17, let's throw that into a box and we're done. Not too bad. And got this under a half an hour, not too bad. And these are pretty straightforward. Well, these are kind of big numbers, aren't they? All right, 100 and 150. So I'm like, I can put a lot of 50. That's a big number. How many A's can I pull? Oh, A to the seventh, okay, fine. How about B's, B to the third? Yay. So 50, 100 divided by 50 is two. All the A's go away. I'm left with B squared for the first half. Second half minus, watch out for that negative sign. That 150 divided by 50 is three. Uh, all the A's go away except a single A, and all the B's do go away. And ladies and gentlemen, there's my factored form. Well, not too painful, I guess. Thank you very much. Have a good day. See you next time. Bye-bye.